Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to set up a static IP address on a headless Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS. So what I mean by headless is that the Raspberry Pi itself is connected to a network using Ethernet, but it doesn't use a mouse, keyboard or monitor. In other words, there's nowhere to manage it using a GUI. So without further ado, let's crack on with the video. So the first thing we need to do is enable SSH or secure shell within Raspberry Pi OS just so we can communicate with the Raspberry Pi on the network. And I found that the absolute easiest way to do this is to enable it when you initially flash the operating system to your SD card and my recommendation would be to use the Raspberry Pi Imager tool which is available to download for Linux, Windows and Mac OS. Although for this particular video I'm going to use my installation of Ubuntu which is a Linux distribution. But in either case, once you've installed the Raspberry Pi Imager tool, launch it from your application launcher. The first thing we need to do is choose what OS that we're going to install. My recommendation is either to use the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS or the 32-bit. For this example, I'm just going to select the 64-bit version. Then we're going to choose our storage. Now, since I'm recording this on my PC, I'm also just going to choose a, an SSD that I've got installed. But for in reality, you'll be selecting your SD card that you want to format. So the next step would be to click on the right button, which would start the installation process. But before we do that, we're going to quickly click on this cog icon down here. And the reason we're going to do this is it's going to allow us to make some changes uh, to the actual installation itself when it loads up. Most importantly, we need to enable here where it says enable SSH. I typically choose the option here where it says use password authentication and then just give it a username. So for example, uh, let's call it Pi. And then we'll put a very, very secure password that's definitely not 1234567 So At this point, we can click Save here and then press the right button to begin the installation. I'd also make a note of this username and password as that's what you're going to be using when you're connecting to it using SSH. Now, just another thing to note, if you've already flashed the OS to your SD card, it is possible to still enable SSH. And the way that you do that is you create a blank file, literally just called SSH and then you place it into the root of the file directory. So how this works is that when the Pi boots up, it will check for certain files. And if it finds a blank file called SSH, then it will enable SSH for that system. And from here, you can then just communicate with the Pi using the credentials that you previously set up. So now that Raspberry Pi is on the network, then more than likely it would have been given an IP address from your router using DHCP. So we need to next determine what IP address it's been given. The absolute easiest way to do that is to use an IP scanner, of which there are several available. However, my recommendation is to use the Angry IP scanner, as this is cross-platform, so it works on Linux, Mac OS and Windows. But really, it's up to you. Choose whatever which one works best for you. But in either case, launch your IP scanner and then run a search on your local network. So once the scan's finished, let's sort by hostname. And as you can see, my gateway or router is set to 192.168.1.1. I've got an AP on 1.3. And then here's my Pi hole, which I've already previously set up. So that's my Raspberry Pi on 1.2. So now that we know what the IP address of our Raspberry Pi is, we can connect to it using an SSH client. So a common one that people use is Putty. Although to my knowledge, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS can connect using SSH using their respective command line interfaces. However, in my case, I'll be using the Linux terminal to connect to the Raspberry Pi using SSH, which I can do with the following terminal command. SSH pi at 192.168.1.2. And once you're connected, you should see something along the lines of this screen here. So now that we're connected, we can actually start to make some changes. But first, we need a little bit more information. Specifically, we need to know what the Ethernet network interface is called on the Raspberry Pi, as well as the subnet mask. And it's very easy to work this out. You just need to run the following command. And the command is if config. So running this command will provide a lot of information, but we only really need to take note of two things. First, we need to know what the network interface is. So in my particular setup is this one here, where it says end zero. And the second thing we need to know is what the net mask or subnet mask if you're coming from Windows, in this case, it's 255.255.0, which is kind of typical for a normal local network at home. Right, so with that, we have all the information we need to set up a static IP address. Now, for installations that use Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, then what we need to do is create a new config file called end0. 
which you can do with this volume terminal command. sudo nano, and then we're going to path to slash etc slash network slash interfaces dot d, and then finally slash end zero. So inside this file, you want to specify the IP address you wish to set as static, the network range, the subnet slash netmask, as well as the gateway that matches your network. So for example, for me, I would put the following information, which is allow dash hot plug end zero, I face end zero, init static, and then the IP address, which is 192.168.1.2, my network range, which is 192.168.1.0, my net mask or subnet mask, which is three lots of two five five and a zero, and then finally gateway of my network, which is my router, which is one nine two one six eight one dot one. Now, alternatively, if you're using a earlier version of Raspberry Pi OS, for example, Buster, then we would create and edit a different file entirely, and that file is the DHCP CD config file. And once again, we can access that with the following command, which is sudo nano slash etc and then DHCP cd.config. So on my system, I've got that set up to use interface, again, referencing the network adapter, end zero, static IP address, which unsurprisingly is what you specify for your static IP address. So in this case, it'll be 192.168.1.2 and then slash 24. Static router or gateway in this case is going to be 192.168.1.1. And now we're going to specify our DNS or domain name servers, which in most cases is going to be a router. So again, 192.168.1.1 for me. In either case, once you're happy with your settings, you want to save the file, you can do that with the shortcut of Control X and then Y. And all that's left to do now is to reboot the Raspberry Pi so that it picks up the static IP address on launch, which you can do with the following command, sudo reboot. So with that, you're all done. So in conclusion, now you know how to set up a static IP address on a headless Raspberry Pi setup. As always guys, thank you very much for watching this video and if you did find it helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, share the video around and if you want to support me in what I do, then hit that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. As always, thanks again and I'll catch you next time. Bye now.